Okay, chapter eight, section two, arithmetic sequences. So as I mentioned before, a sequence is just a list of numbers and there doesn't have to be a pattern uh, to go from one to the other, but it's just more interesting when there are patterns. So we, we focus on the cases where there is some sort of pattern. There's a lot of patterns out there, but in this class, we really only focus on two of them. The first one is this one, an arithmetic sequence. And the other one is a geometric sequence, which is the following section. Okay, so in this section, we'll look at arithmetic sequences. We'll describe them, define them, we'll use them. And then we'll also find the partial sums of arithmetic sequences. Um, okay, so what is an arithmetic sequence? So an arithmetic sequence is a sequence that fits this pattern. So let me zoom in a little more here. Perhaps the simplest way to generate a sequence is to start with a number a and add a fixed number constant d uh, over and over and over again. So it's a sequence where the pattern from one term to the next is very, very simple. It's just that we add something to it. So for example, let's say that we just start with a number five, that's the starting value, a sub one, and then to the next one, we add three. To get from one to the next, we add three. So let's say that one's eight. And then to get to the next one, we add three again, so that's gonna be 11. And then we add three again, so then the next one's gonna be 14, right? So here is a very simple arithmetic sequence where we go from one to the next, we add three. We get from this one to this one, we add three. Right, so we always add three to get from one to the next to the next to the next. Okay. All right. Now, if we con if we tie them all down to that initial value, then this guy, the eight, is a five plus a three. Let's change it from this. The eight is the five plus a three. Good. And then tying it back down to that initial value, the eleven, is really a five plus two copies of three. Three plus three. Right? One copy, two copies. And then the next one on the list, this 14, again, tying it back to that initial value is a five, and then plus three copies of three. One, two, three. Three copies of three. Good. Okay, so um, then we can rewrite this as, uh, so let me, let me write this thing. So a sub one is just equal to five. A sub 2 is equal to 5 plus 3. A sub 3 then is equal to 5 plus 2 copies of 3. A sub 4 is a 5 plus 3 copies of 3. Right? 1, 2, 3. And so following that same pattern, I can see that the next one is going to be 5 plus 4 copies of 3. And just to make the whole thing pretty here, let's just add a 1 here. 1 times Let's erase that. Let me make it pretty. Three, and then it's a one times a three. One copy of three, two copies of three, three copies of three, so on and so forth. So what's the pattern between the indexed value two and here, right? So to find the second one on the list, we start with the initial value and add one copy of three. To find the third one on the list, we start with the initial value and add two copies of three. Right. So the relationship between this number and this number is that this one is always one smaller than that one. Good. So following that same pattern, as I keep going and I say, okay, let's find the nth number. I know it's going to be the first, tying it back down to that first value, plus, and then some multiple of three. And the relationship we've been establishing here is that when this is five, this is four. When this is four, this is three. Right? It's always one less. So if this is n, this is going to be n minus 1. Good. Good, 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 good. Any questions, any questions, any questions? No? No? Okay, so we, in general, like to call this the a sub 1 value, just a, which is the initial, uh, the first term of our sequence. And then we call this the common difference, right? The common difference. Common Difference. And we often use the letter D. So in general, we get this little formula right here. Right. A is that initial amount. In my little example, just using this as a little example, for me, A was equal to 5. And the common difference, D, is this 3. I'm always adding 3 every time. Good. So I can express my arithmetic sequence this way. 
a and then a plus a d and a plus two d's and then a plus three d's or I can express it with this formula. Any questions about that? No? Good. Questions, questions, questions? Okay, so the number d is called the common difference uh, because any two consecutive terms in the arithmetic sequence differ by d. Right? Any two consecutive numbers differ by the value d. And an arithmetic sequence is determined completely by the first term a and the common difference d. If you just know those two things, the first term and the common difference, you can completely expand out the whole sequence uh, by knowing those two things. And you can write down the formula, write the closed formula for it, because all it needs is a, the initial value, and d, the common difference. Okay. Thus, if we know the first two terms of the arithmetic sequence, then we can find the formula for the nth term, uh, as the next example shows. Okay, so let's look at this example. Find the common difference, uh, the first six terms, the nth term, the 300th term of this sequence here. Okay, so this is a given sequence, so we know that the first value, a sub one is that guy, a sub two is a seven, a sub three is a one, a sub four is a negative five. And so the a in our formula is a sub one, and that's a 13, right? So we know the first value, and to find the common difference, all we have to do is take any two consecutive values and subtract them. So the common difference uh, in these is a negative six. So it's seven D is equal to seven minus 13. So D equals to negative six, which we would have gone by any other two consecutive numbers. One minus seven can also give you D. So D still gives you negative six. Right? Any two consecutive numbers, you subtract them. Um, notice that in, in the um, sort of more traditional case uh, that we had before when I was adding three, they were going up. Okay. I was growing by three. It's always plus three plus three. So here I would have gotten my common difference by taking eight minus five or three, or I could have gotten my common difference by taking 11 minus eight or three. So it has to be in that order. Right, one minus the one that came before it, right, and that gives you positive, positive growths. But notice that in this example, they're minus, they're, we get a minus, and that's because it's decelerating, they're getting smaller, they're growing toward the negative direction. Right? So we're getting negative d. Okay, so now we have everything we need. The formula for this sequence was a plus n minus one d, right? So for us, a is equal to 13 plus n minus one, and then d is equal to negative six. So here's our closed formula for this sequence right there. We can manipulate this a little bit, put this out in front, make it a subtraction. So it might look a little nicer if we write it as 13 minus six times n minus one. Let's check to make sure that it works out for the last one we know for sure. Check, so when n equals to four, we better get a negative five. Okay, so a sub four, a sub four should be equal to 13 minus six times four minus one. Okay, so that's gonna be 13 minus six times three, which means that a sub four is equal to 13 minus 18 means a sub four equals to negative five. Yep, just what we expected. So the formula seems to be working out. Okay, so find the common difference. The first six terms, okay, so it's asking me for a sub five and a sub six, and the 100th term, I'm sorry, the 300th term. Okay, so now that I have that, that formula for it, and a sub five is gonna be equal to 13 minus six times five minus one, a sub five will be 13 minus six times four. A sub five is gonna be 13 minus 24. A sub five is gonna be equal to negative 11. Good, pretty good. The other way I could get it is by pointing out that the common difference is minus six. I'm always subtracting minus six. So um, if I know the fourth one, right, one on this list, this means I subtract six every time. So minus six gets me to minus 11. And I know that minus six is going to get me to minus 17. Right? So just knowing that I'm subtracting six every time, I can easily conclude that the next one is minus 11 and then minus 17. 
or I can use my closed formula. Let's use the closed formula one more time. A sub 6 is going to be equal to 13 minus 6 times 6 minus 1, which means it will be 13 minus 6 times 5, which means it will be 13 minus 30, which means it will be negative 17, just like I had suspected. Okay. So, so far I have that we have uh, our list, our sequence, did it have a name? 13, 7, 1, 13, then 7, then 1, then um, minus 5, then minus 11, then minus 17. Right, so here is my first uh, few values of my sequence. I'm subtracting 6 every time or adding a negative 6 every time. Right? Since technically we're doing a, a summation, it's just that we add a negative number every time. Okay, but now the next thing they wanted was to find the 300th value. We found a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5, a sub 6, dot, 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 dot. But now they want a sub 300. These we could have easily gotten by just subtracting 6 every time. But then to get to 300, that would take forever, especially if you don't have technology to subtract 6 every time all the way until you get to 300. So that's not a very efficient way to do it. Luckily, we do have this formula. Right? So using the formula, we can just plug it right in and get our answer fairly easily from there. Right? So now a sub 300 is just equal to 13 uh, minus 6 times 300 minus 1. So a sub 300 is equal to 13 minus, what's that going to be, um, 299, 6 times 299, so that should be 1,794. Okay. So you have 299 times 4. Ah! Yeah. So 299 times 6. Okay. Oh, yeah, cool. Um, 13, 17, 4. Yeah, 1781. Minus 1781. Oops, so that's what goes here. Minus 1781. Any questions? No? No? No questions? Let's see what the author did. Uh, common difference is minus 6. Plug it into our formula. Yep, that's what we get there. And then you can get the first few numbers quite easily. We just subtract 6 every time. And then when we plug in 300, we get to this. No questions. Good, good, good. Okay, but what if they don't give us two consecutive terms? They don't give us the first two terms. They just give us any two terms. Now the questions get a little bit more fun. So here's another example. The 11th term of an arithmetic sequence is 52, and the 19th term of the sequence is 92. Find the 1,000th term. Okay, so kind of visually, let's, let's kind of create what, we, what, uh, what this is saying. So here's a sub 1, which they didn't give me. There's a sub 2, they didn't give me that one. They gave me the 11th term, so dot, 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 way over here. They gave me the 11th term of my sequence. Stop it. The 11th term of my sequence, they said that one was a 52. And then dot, 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 they gave me the 19th term of the sequence, which is a 92. Good. Dot, 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 dot. And their question is, find the 1,000th term of the sequence. Good. Okay, so another key thing is that they did tell us and it's an arithmetic sequence. So by knowing that it's an arithmetic sequence, I know that this is the formula for it. Okay. It has to fit that. And that's where a is a sub 1 in the arithmetic sequence. And so a sub 1 is the same thing as a. Okay, so our mission, if we choose to take it, is that we need to figure out what this is. If we can figure out what A is, and we can figure out what D is, we'll get our closed formula for it. And once we have our formula for it, we can come back over here and plug in N equals to 1,000 into there, and we'll be able to get our results. Good. Okay, so from this, I can get that when N was equal to 11, N sub 11, 
10 sub 11 is equal to that initial value, which we don't know, plus, and then this guy was 11 minus 1, and then a common difference d, which we don't know. Good. So the, uh, the output of this whole thing was 52, so we should get that 52. Right? That's what this is. The 11th number on my list is 52. 52 is equal to a plus 10d. From here, from here, then we get that uh, the 19th term, the 19th term is equal to a, an unknown value, plus 19 minus 1 times the common difference d, which we also don't know. And so this is going to lead me to 92 is equal to a plus 18d. Good. So what we have here is a system of equations. So we have 52 is equal to a plus 10d, and we also have 92 is equal to a plus 18d. Good. Good, good, good. The way I'm going to solve it is by the elimination method. So I'm going to add these two equations, uh, but I want to first manipulate them a little bit such that when I add them, one of the variables disappears. And since um, I just have a positive a here, that makes it makes sense to multiply this equation by, so let's call this um, equation number one and equation number two. So I'm going to take equation number one and multiply it by negative one. That way I get a minus a there. Okay. So I'll get a negative 52. Negative 52 is equal to negative a minus 10d. Right? After I just distribute a minus through all of these. And then I'll get a 92 equals to a plus 18d. Now I'm going to add these guys. When I add them, this is just going to give me a 40 equals, these guys cancel, equals 8d. And now I can divide both sides by 8, and 40 divided by 8 equals to d. So the common difference, d, equals to 5. Good. So one down, one to go. And once you have one of them down, then you can go into your either one of your statements, equation 1 or equation 2, to solve for the other one. Okay. So now, now that I have that, I'm going to go back to equation 1. Plus 10d. But now I know that the d is actually a 5. Right, plugging this d into there, scoot this up here a little bit, I get that 52 is equal to a plus 10 times 50. And 10 times 5, which is 50. So 52 equals to a plus 50. So therefore, 52 minus 50 equals to a. a equals to 2. Now I got everything I needed. Right? So coming back up here, this must be a 2, and this must be a 5. I have my formula. a sub n equals to 2 plus n minus 1. n minus 1 times 5. Okay, so now that we have our formula, now we can answer the next part of it. Once we have our formula, we can find the 1,000th term. Right? So now a sub 1,000 is going to be equal to 2 plus 1,000 1,000 minus 1 times 5. Good. So if I distribute this 5, it'll make the whole thing a little easier. It's 2 plus, and then 1,000 times 5, that's just 5,000 minus 5, that's 4,995, plus 2, 4,997. 4, so that's the number that goes right here. That's the answer to our, our whole thing. 4,997. Good. Any questions? No questions, no questions, no questions, no questions. Good, 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 good. good. Okay, all right, let's see what the author did. Uh, same thing, they set up a system of equations. 52 equals to a plus 10d, 92 equals to a plus 18d. Uh, solve it, and they get, okay, he just said solve the system. So you get a equals to 2, d equals to 5. So you get the same uh, closed formula, 1,000 leads to that, and that's how we get our answer.
Any questions at all? Okay, so sometimes you'll be given a uh, arithmetic sequence, you're asked, asked to expand it or find a particular value. Sometimes you're given the sequence and you're told it's an arithmetic sequence, find the formula, like we just did. Um, and then another thing that we might be asked to do is to find the partial sum of an arithmetic sequence, like sum the first 10 of them or sum the first 100 of them, something like that. You can always just do it by brute force and actually just add them all. Uh, but we want to establish patterns to make life a little easier. So, for instance, let's say that you're given the task of adding the first 100 numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, all the way up to 100. Um, so we can express that using a Riemann notation like this, right? So we want to add the first 100 values. Uh, this is a very famous uh, example that was uh, given to a famous mathematician named Gauss uh, when he was just a little just a little kid, uh, I think like in the first grade or something like that. Uh, he was a brilliant guy. So his teacher thought this was going to be a really tedious, long kind of thing. Uh, and little brilliant Gauss figured it out in no time um, and uh, you know, became famous. So how did he do it? How do you find, what's a nice little shortcut for finding the sum of the first 100 numbers? So let's think of it this way. We want to find this, right? Find the sum s. Right? That's what we want. And it's going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Da, da, da. Keep going, right? Da, 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 da. Way, way, way at the end over here. We have the 96th term plus the 97th term plus the 98th term plus the 99th term plus 100, finally, right? Okay, so that's what we want to do. We want to find s, which is equal to the sum of all of these numbers. Okay, well, how about if we also consider s just written backwards? 100 plus 99, plus 98, plus 97, plus 96, plus da 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 da, da right? And then going backwards, the last one would be a 1. Right before that would be a 2. Right before that would be a 3. Right before that would be a 4. Right before that would be a 5, and so on and so forth. Right? There would be 100 numbers there, and so 100 numbers here. Because right? they're just written in reverse. Okay, so now, if I add both of these two things, on the left-hand side, I would get twice the s value. Right? Like, let's say this whole sum adds up to, I don't know, for 49,000 or something, or whatever, some number, then if I add this plus this, that'd be twice as much. Like let's say it adds up to 4,000, then adding these two would add up to 8,000. Okay, now on an individual turn by turn basis, this is where something interesting happens. The one plus the, the one plus the 100 adds up to 101. Plus, and then the two plus the 99 adds up to 101. And then the three plus the 98 adds up to 101. Right, so in every single case, they always add up to 101. And same thing at the end here. 96 plus 5 adds up to 101. And 97 plus 4 add up to 101. And 101. And 101. And 101. Okay. okay. Well, a shortcut of a long addition like this is to figure out how many are there and multiply that times 101. Right? So all of this right here, all of this is 101, 100 copies of these. Right? Because remember, each one of these led to a 101. So this is... 100 copies, 100 uh, copies of 101. Good. So all of that can be simplified as follows. This is equal to 2 times s equals to 100 copies times 101. Any questions about that? And so now s can be found by dividing both sides by 2. Let's take, well, I'll do it in another step, divided by 2, divided by 2. So we get 2s there, 100, and 101 there. And so s, I'll put it here, s equals to 1 half of 100 times 101. Good. Questions, questions, questions? So this is just going to be equal to 50 50. So here's little gals, figured all this out in first grade or something. Figured out that instead of actually adding 1 plus 2 plus 3, right, plus 4, that, you know, that would have taken a very long time to add up all 100 numbers that way. But there's a nice, pretty little shortcut to it. Any questions? No? No? Okay, so this was just a simple example where we just want to add the first 100 numbers. Uh, but what if we want to apply the same idea, the same pattern that he did in general to any uh, arithmetic sequence? So we want to follow the same, the, same, um, the same technique to be able to figure out a general pattern. So I'll put in general. Given any uh, uh, given any arithmetic sequence, sum the first n values, sum the first n values. Okay, so if it's any arithmetic sequence, we know that the formula is going to be this: n minus one d. 
So if we want to expand the first uh, n numbers of my sequence, it would be a is the first one, right? And then it's going to be a um, plus d, and then it's going to be a plus 2d, and then it's going to be a plus 3d, da 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 da, -da. And then the last one on there is going to be a plus n minus 1d. Okay, so if I want to find the sum of the first n of them, I want to find the, that sum right there, all of those right there. Just like before, we want to apply this technique. Let's write them all down in, in, a, in, in this direction. So I want to do a plus, now I want to do a plus d, plus, next I want to do a plus 2d. And you know what, let's put them in parentheses so that they look a little better. That one, and then that one, so we plus signs that around. And then the next one is going to be a plus 3d. And then the next one, dot, 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 dot. And I want to go all the way out to that last one over there. And the last one is going to be a plus n minus 1d, right? Well, what came right before it? So the, notice that the pattern here is that, um, okay, well, we have the initial value, but then we have one copy of d is the second one on the list. The third one on the list is two copies of d. The fourth one on the list is three copies of d, and so on and so forth. So the nth one on the list is n minus 1 copies of d. The one that comes right before it is going to be a plus uh, n minus 2d. And the one that comes right before that is going to be equal to a plus n minus 3d. Okay. Any questions about that? No? No? Okay, just following advice, then we're just going to rewrite the exact same list but in reverse order. So the last one on the list is going to be a plus n minus 1d. Okay. n minus 1d plus the one that came right before that, which is the last one on my list, the one that came right before that would be a plus n minus 2d. The one that came right before that would be a plus n minus 3d. Um, and the one that came right before that would be a plus n minus 4d. Da, 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 da. Until the very last one, okay, going in this direction, the last one would be a. And the one that came right before the very last one would be a plus d. And the one that came right before that would have been a plus 2d. Okay. okay, so now following the same pattern as before, we're going to add all these up. And so I end up with twice as many as the s of n's as I want, the sum of the first n values. So I add them up, and I get that. Okay, and so what happens with these? Let's add these two up. So if I add these two, well, we add the common terms. It's just going to be a plus a plus this. So that first term is going to end up being a plus a plus n minus 1d. Okay. So all of this ends up being 2a plus n minus 1d. That's this first term. These, these first two being added. Do this. Good. Next, we want to add the next two terms. Plus, and now we want to add this one and this one. Right? We're going to add these two, and that's going to lead to this next summation. So that's going to be a plus d, and then we want to add to it plus a plus n minus 2d. Good. Again, we combine our terms, so that's going to give us 2a. 2a. And then we have d plus d plus n minus 2d. Good. And these, if we factor out a d, we end up with 1 plus n minus 2 times d, 2a, that's all that. And so these simplify to give me 2a plus n minus 1d. Oh, same thing as that one. Good. We'll do one more just to show that it, 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 uh, it always works out. So the, these two give you this one, these two give you this one, and then uh, this one plus this one, I'm gonna add these two, and I'll put them over there. I have a plus 2d, and I want to add to it um, a plus n minus 3d. Okay, so again, you combine my terms, we get a 2a for sure, 2a plus, and now we end up with these. Um, so I end up with 2d plus n minus 3d. Again, if I factor out a d from these, I get a 2 plus n minus 3, and multiplied by d, plus 2a. So I get 2a plus n minus 1d, exactly the same thing as before. Right? So these two give you 2a plus n minus 1d. These two give you 2a plus n minus 1d. These two give you 2a plus n minus 1d. And that'll happen all the way along the line. Just like in the previous example when we did uh, these numbers, they always added up to 101, 101, 101, 101 every time. And how many did we have? Well, in the previous example, we had 100 copies of 101. So what's going to happen here is that we're going to end up with n copies, right? There are entities, n copies of this. Good. 
So we're going to be adding all of these. So let me copy that down here. So, so far what we have is that this 2 S sub n is equal to 2a plus n minus 1d plus another copy of 2a plus n minus 1d plus another copy of 2a plus n minus 1 times d. Right, that's what these are, these are coming from here. This green one was the result of that guy and, well, I guess, what is this one? This one was the result of that. The green one was the result of that one, and then the blue one. So I just did the first three, but then we can keep going, keep going. And then you can see that obviously the last one is gonna be really easy. The last one is just gonna be this. So we'll say plus dot, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going. And the last one is just gonna be a plus a, that's two a, two a plus n minus one d, plus n minus one d. Again, the exact same thing. So we have two a n minus one d, one time, two times, three times, oh, d, got the d in here, n minus one d. Mm. n minus 1 d. Okay, and so we have n copies of this. It's the sum of n copies of 2a plus n minus 1 d. So twice s sub n is equal to n times 2a plus n minus 1 d. So just like before, we divide both sides by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, and we're almost at our formula. The sum of the first n values of an arithmetic sequence is equal to n divided by 2 times 2a plus n minus 1d. That's one of the given formulas for it. Or the other thing we could do is expand this out a little bit and say that if we expand it, we can rewrite it as s sub n is equal to n over 2. And then I'm going to rewrite this as a plus a plus n minus 1d since 2a can just be written as a plus a. Okay. And then this is the formula for the nth value. It's the last term. This is a sub n. Okay. So this is s sub n equals to n over 2, and this is going to be a plus a sub n. That's the other way that this formula is given. Okay. Okay. So meaning that I, this is the formula, the closed formula for the underlying sequence, but it also represents the last value in the sequence that you're trying to add. So if you know the first term and the last term, and how many terms there are, then you can find the sum of all the, all the values. Any questions? No? No? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, let's see what your author did here. Okay, same kind of thing. So if you want to find the first n values, the sum of the first n values of a given arithmetic sequence, here they are. Here's the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, so on and so forth. This is the nth term, right? Yes. And now if we want to add them all up, well, it looks like you didn't really go through the, you know, the process of doing it, but we end up with the same formulas. Right? So it's 2a plus n minus 1d times n over 2, or that can simplify into this, which is given in a nice little table for you to use. For an arithmetic sequence, and be careful that this formula only applies to arithmetic sequences. Here, uh, for an arithmetic sequence given by a sub n equals to a plus n minus 1 uh, times d, the nth partial sum, s of n, right, the sum of the first n values of the arithmetic sequence, is given by one of these two formulas, which they're, they're both equal to each other. It depends on how you want to memorize them. And sometimes one is easier to apply than the other, depending on the initial conditions given to you. Okay, so for example, find the sum of the first 50 odd numbers. Okay, so let's do this. Find the sum of the first 50 odd numbers. Okay, so here they are. There's 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, dot, 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 dot. So, so far I have the first one, the second one, the third odd number, the fourth odd number, the fifth odd number, the sixth odd number, right? So don't confuse the actual value um, with this, right? This is this is indicating that we want 50 numbers, not that we want to reach up to the value 50. Um, that, that sometimes confuses people. Anyway, so we want to keep going, keep going until we find the 50th odd number and then add them all together. That's what we want to do. So because they're the odd numbers, we already know we've been working with this thing. We know that the formula, the closed formula for odd numbers is this one, right? So if we let n equal to one, we get to one. If we let n equal to two, we get to three, right? And so on and so forth. So from here, um, I can find out some more information. I know that the 50th odd number is going to be 2 times 50 minus 1. So the 50th odd number is going to be 99. 99. Okay. So the first of the first, the sum of the first uh, 50 odd numbers is really the same thing as this. S sub 50 equals to 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 plus da 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 da. All the way out to, um, well, the last one is 99, but the one that came right before it would be 97. The one that came right before that would be 95. Good. So that's what we want to find out, the sum of all those. So we already know Gauss's little trick. We could do it in reverse, put a 99 here, 99 
97, right? And it looks like in this case, they would all add up to 100, right? This little trick of saying, well, let's, let's double that. Let's rewrite this in reverse. That would be 99 there plus 97 plus 95 plus dot, 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 dot. And we know this ends in a one there and a three there and a five there. And we know that his little trick is to add these. So that was 100 plus 100 plus 100. They always add up to the same thing, dot, 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 dot. plus 100 plus 100. And we know that there's going to be 50, right? This is the first 50 numbers. There's 50 of them. So we know that this is going to be equal to uh, 50 copies of 100 being added. So if we um, add them together, we have twice as much as what we want. So twice S sub 50 would be equal to 100 times 50. And so S sub 50 would be equal to 1 half of 100 times 50. OK, that's kind of doing it by hand and reinventing the whole wheel. That's why we went through the trouble of doing it in general, so that we can just use our nice, pretty little formulas for it, right? So this is sort of brute force method following his pattern. But also, we have this nice little formula. The sum of the first n values is given by either this formula or this formula. We can follow either one. So one of them is that it's n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1 times the common difference d. Okay, And so we have everything we need to be able to figure out the answer for when n equals to 50. The first 50 numbers is going to be equal to 50 over 2 times twice the initial number, which was 1. Right? This is for um, for us, a equals to 1 from there. And the common difference, well, that's easy to tell. The common difference is going to be to always add 2. So d equals to 2. Okay, So plugging into here, we get this. We get 50 minus 1 times 2. So s sub 50 is going to be equal to 25 times, and this is going to be 2 plus uh, 49 times 2 is 98. Excuse me, s sub 50 is equal to 25 times 100. And I can already tell that that's going to be the same answer as this one. I do half times 50, that's 25. 25 times 50. Or s sub 50 is going to be 25 hundredths. Same thing as before when we did the brute force method over here. It's 25 hundred. Any questions so far? We did it the hard way there. We can use the first formula. And we can also use the second formula given. Either one is fine. The second formula for the sum of the first n values is equal to 1 half a plus a sub n. Right? Oh, no. Times n. n times a plus a sub n over 2. That's the other formula for it. And so for us, if we have the 50th one, we want to find the sum of the first 50. Then we multiply 50 times the first number of my sequence, which was a 1. The last number that I want to figure out, which is uh, plus a sub 50, a sub 50, the last number in the sequence, all divided by 2. So s sub 50 is equal to 50 times 1 plus 99. Right? 99 is the last number in my sequence. This is a sub 50. Right, right there, a sub 50. So the whole thing divided by 2. So I'll get 100 divided by 2. So give me the same answer. 2500. Same answer. Okay, any questions? Questions, 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 questions. Let's see what the author did. Okay, same thing. They found the closed formula for the arithmetic sequence, and then they used that formula to figure out the 50th value on the list is 99. And then you can just use one of the formulas. So they went with this formula. This is the formula of um, the general formula of. S sub n is equal to n times a plus a sub n all over 2. Okay. So a sub 50, the 50th value, the last value is 99. a sub 1 was 1. And so that gets us to the same answer as before. Okay, so very important, don't forget that this formula only applies to an arithmetic sequence, right? The partial sum of an arithmetic sequence of n arithmetic sequence.